the third uh, chapter, the Rambam deals about a very fascinating concept, which how far can a person be liable on his chometz? In other words, we have learned in the Torah that not only if the chometz is in his possession, he will be liable, but even if the chometz, his chometz, in other people's possession, he will also going to be liable. On the other hand, if at the other people's chometz, non-Jewish chometz, or a chometz that belongs to Hegdesh, that in his possession, since it is not his, he going to be exempt. Yet, when we're talking about his, the term his, when it comes to Passover, it's extend below the simple definition of his. For example, if an individual borrowed or accepted Chometz for a deposit. Many people have the business of self-storage. So let's say he has a business of self-storage. So he charges rent for the objects of Chometz which are in his possession. So now, is he obligated to remove the Chometz, to burn, to get rid of the Chometz throughout Passover? So the answer is, if he will be liable in case that the Chometz being lost, burned, or disappears, so his liability towards the Chometz makes it halachically as it is his, and therefore he is liable to get rid of the Chometz. When any type of liability that the individual incurs for the sake of of definition whether the Chometz it is his or not, it will be considered his. It's a very, very important rule or principle that goes through the entire chapter. There is also another interesting subject, it's called Ta'oives. It's not outright Chometz, but it's a Chometz that comes in a form of a mixture. So the general rule when it comes to a mixture of chometz and it is not edible, not even for a dog, a person is not going to be violating baliroi or balimotze if it remains in his possession. He's not allowed to benefit from it, but it's okay for him to have it in his possession. I would like to conclude with a very interesting story and a vote. The rabbi of Philadelphia, Rabbi Yales Oliver Sholoin, wrote once to the Rebbe a question. And the question was based on what the Arizal writes in his book, that if a person is careful not having chometz throughout Passover and he's really careful, he is being guaranteed that he won't sin throughout the year. So the question was, we have learned in the Talmud a story about one of the greatest sages by the name of Rabbi Shmuel, that once mistakenly he was taking, he was moving the candle on Shabbos, and by doing so, he happened to violate unintentionally, the Meleche, Meleches Havolot, the idea of adding fire. And the Talmud writes that he took out his pen and he wrote in his notebook that when Moshiach will come and Beis Amikadosh will be built, it's up to him to go and bring a fat chatos, a offering, a sin offering as atonement for his sin. How you can imagine Rabbi Shmuel, such a great sage, obviously he was careful not having any involvement with Chomet throughout Passover. So how is it possible for him to do so? 
So the Rebbe wrote him a very interesting answer. Most likely, this event took place at the Shabbos Cholamoyed Passover, which means a person is being guaranteed if he kept the entire Passover that he is not going to sin until the beginning of next Passover. So the insurance policy of not sinning is being stretched from the end of the Passover that he was careful until the beginning of the next Passover. But what's in the period of in between? He is insuranceless. He has no policy. And therefore, it was a very possible, the guarantee policy was not covered. Which this story reminded me of another story that I myself was witness to it. Many years ago, used to be a Hasid who lived in Tel Aviv. Big philanthropist and very devoted Hasid who used to go every year to the Rebbe for the high holidays. Since he was blessed with lots of wealth, his custom was to purchase the taking out the Torah from the Holy Ark at the eve of Yom Kippur right before Kol Nidrin. There is a psalm of the Hillim is being recited and the Sefer Teiro is a big schus and he paid a tremendous amount of money and every time he took the Sefer Teiro he passed by the Rebbe and the Rebbe wished him Der Lebi Berayor you should live to next year and it was the first year when I came to America it was the Tishrei of it was September 1984, Tishrei Tovshin He was heading towards taking out, purchasing the Sefer Torah that he is accustomed to purchase, and he collapsed right there. And the doctors determined that there is nothing to do. And then people have realized that exactly that's what happened to him. The policy that he was having, the Lepti Berayo, was covering from the moment that he purchased the Sefer Toyo until the moment that he will purchase the Sefer Toyo next year. And at that, exactly at that short period of time, that's exactly where he passed away. And I remember at that time when it was he collapsed, and the Hatzolo came in and they spoke with the Rebbe and the Rebbe suggested them they should keep resuscitating him. Resuscitating him. And the reason, given the fact that it was literally 10,000 of people there and if they will proclaim that he is death and all the Koyhanim will have to exit, then such a exposure to literal physical harm and danger would be there. So in order to avoid this possibility, the resuscitating process have continued while they were walking out from him from 770. And this is an item that I myself witnessed. What was even more terrifying at that time, one of those chassidim who was attending there by the name of Reb Zusha Partizan, he said, ah, this man died right inside the holy chamber of the Rebbe. For me, it will be enough also to die right in the yard. And exactly a year later, it was the Erev Sukhois. And you can see it on the video. It used to be a custom at the time that people from Kfar Chabad on Sukhois used to bring the Lulovim and the Esoigim to gift to the Rebbe and the Rebbe used to choose uh, which one he wants and at the end he used to go and wish to every one of them who passed by you should extend the energies, the vibes, vibes of Sukkot for the entire, the rest of the year. And you can see it in the video. Everybody is passing by including and he wished to each and every one of them. And when he passing by the Rebbe doesn't say a word. 
he figure out that something is wrong. So he tries a second time. And again, the Rebbe said to the one before, to the one, one after, and not to him. I remember that night, he was participating in Simchas Besa Shoevo, and he was dancing, and then he was heading towards 770. And on the way there, he was, since he was called Zosha the Partisan, he proclaimed to, to everybody, you should continue the war. He felt something is going on. And literally, he went, he sat at the yard of 770, and he collapsed right there. And exactly two years after, he said, for me, it will be enough. The yard, I don't need the chamber itself, happened to him as well. I'm just, uh, how I, I got to it, because we were speaking about the insurance policy of the Arizal, it covers only from the end of Passover till only the beginning of next Passover. That's why it was possible for Abishmoel to die. So again, thank you very much for your participation. Okay.